from what I understand, the, the Apple headset is going to be projecting and using something called audio ray tracing to try to project and create a virtual environment inside and then calculate how the audio path will then go back to a listener if they were in that, that virtual environment or in, in a real environment like that. All right, finally, Dr. Castro. <laughs> we just watched uh, Apple Presents about all the beautiful future they're trying to show when it mm. comes to the world of audio, visual. But I'm very curious about what audio, uh, Apple's trying to do when it comes to spatial audio versus how is that the same or different than Dolby Atmos that's been around for a long time now? Freaking love Apple. I'm so excited that we can have a, an actual uh, series focus on some of the stuff that Apple's been doing because they do both really cool but also slightly different uh, technologies that do functionally the same kind of thing. Um, for example, the AirPods are two, uh, have a series of really cool technologies in them that allow them to simulate the acoustic in, uh, or a, a spatial acoustic environment, which is really cool. And it, and it sounds similar to what the uh, Dolby has a version of Atmos that's designed for just for two speakers. So either soundbar, uh, two separate speakers or headphones mm -hmm. um, that kind of simulate a spatial environment. And Apple's version of that with spatial audio does something very similar, even though it's slightly different. And the way you can tell it's different is that it's, it's designed to be scaled up into different types of uh, setups with different speakers. Again, sounds very similar to Dolby Atmos, but it's technically their own system that can be uh, ran a little differently. And with today's keynote, you can tell that they had that in mind the whole time making their version of spatial audio because now their new reality headset uh, um, or their vision headset it now is gonna use that spatial audio to be able to interact with the real world in a way that Dolby Atmos was just never designed to do that. So when it comes to the major differences, I'm also curious about how does this impact creation of experiences hmm. for something like Apple Spatial versus Adobe Atmos? Is there a hurdle? Is there a change if you're trying to design one experience to the other? Is there a different workflow? Ah. Do you know that? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good point. I think uh, I, first and foremost, um, uh, Apple Spatial Audio has always worked with Dolby Atmos. Mm. In all of their uh, iTunes, or the uh, Apple Music Library, all the stuff that's mastered for iTunes and that transitioned over that was uh, mastered in Dolby Atmos works just perfectly with whatever system you have uh, in the Apple ecosystem. Um, and those things that have been transferred over, at least in that base form, will still work with this new uh, ecosystem, but I think there's gonna be a new way of maybe taking the, the object metadata for when you're mastering or mixing in Dolby Atmos, keeping that object metadata so it's still kind of uh, bouncing off elements in the room now mm -hmm. that you have it in AR, so it's gonna be more lifelike to imagine that there's actually stuff coming off of the walls and the ceiling and the floor. Uh, now that, from what I understand, the, the Apple headset is gonna be projecting and using something called audio ray tracing to try to project and create a virtual environment inside and then calculate how the audio path will then go back to a listener if they were in that, that virtual environment or in, in a real environment like that. So it's gonna be really cool to see how the stuff that's been made for Dolby Atmos translates in that environment and if there is gonna be a way to be able to convert from Dolby Atmos to uh, Apple Spatial Audio to take advantage of that kind of uh, technology. Got it. And the other part when it comes to spatial audio, just so we can define spatial audio for yeah. most people, um, when you have two speakers, right, mm. and it's pushing sound, it's using something called psychoacoustics, is that correct? That's so right. Yeah. What is, in the most basic terms possible, psychoacoustics? So people can understand, okay, well, I have headphones too, why yeah. can't it do this, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, how is it even possible, yeah. right? How is it possible I can hear something in front and also behind me, or it sounds like it's behind me, yeah. um, when I have just two headphones? And, and that's because um, the way that your ear canal is formed and the way that your brain interprets how the ear canal deals with sound um, helps trick your brain into understanding how depth uh, it, it, uh, exists in a room. So the fact that I can tell that you're coming from this side is because you're hitting this ear and this ear slightly differently and the brain calculates that uh, to be able to determine that you're coming from this side of me. And psychoacoustics is, is the research of how that happens so we can manipulate that in something else like in spatial audio. So that way, even if you're not exactly here, I can have the representation of your voice still hit my left earphone, my right earphone at just slightly different times to make it sound like you're coming from right next to me. But if we flip it around, the same voice can come and then I can shift it so that it hits my right ear first, my left ear second, and it makes it sound like you're coming from more on this side than on the other side. And there's all, I mean, it's a very high level version of it, but you can basically manipulate a lot of things uh, to make it feel like something's coming from in front, behind um, a corner, the other corner, uh, it's something behind something else. There's all sorts of ways that we, we know so much about the audio pathway that we can manipulate many characteristics into making that uh, uh, believable. 
So in simplest terms, the way we engage with sound in the real world is it doesn't hit you exactly at the same time and you can manipulate those pathways. Mm -hmm. And that's what spatial audio is doing, leveraging psychoacoustics and tricking your brain that you're per perceiving it that way even if you're not. Right. And now the new capabilities that Apple is releasing and pushing forward is making spatial even more important in your environment to be fully immersed in the constant experience. I think so. Yeah, super exciting. Awesome. Can't wait to see what they do next, even though Apple is not my uh, number one brand, but <laughs> I can't wait to see what they keep innovating in this one space. One of us. One of us will be the Apple, <laughs> and the other one doesn't have to be. It's okay. All good. <laughs> Appreciate it.